ever read a book, and it's a very good book, but you get about three pages in and you suddenly get very bored and you don't exactly understand why, there are a lot of reasons that this could be the case. One of these reasons is that there is way too much description. The paragraphs are really long, there's so many details that you don't really know which one is important, and there is just such an overwhelm of information that it's pretty impossible to create that clear of a picture of what the setting looks like anyway. Nobody wants to read a book like this, and you don't want to write a book like this. There is such thing as too much description, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get into it, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Claire Fraze and I am an award-winning young adult author who makes videos on this channel sharing the actionable writing tips that helped me make my own writing better. I'm the author of young adult supernatural thriller They Stay, as well as the sequel They Whisper, and the third book in the series is coming out in January. I only make videos on this channel sharing what works for me. I'm a strong believer that there is no right way to write, and all that authors can really do is just share what works for them in the hopes that it will work for other people. As you learn to write, it is your job to experiment with as many different things as you can and analyze whether or not they actually helped you in order to put together your own unique writing process that works for you, your brain, and what you want to be writing. So it is my intention on this channel just to share what worked for me in the hopes that it may also work for you, but if it doesn't, that's fine. So when I talk about description in this video, what do I actually mean? Description is a type of writing that aims to clarify or make vivid a place, a character, an object, or a sensation. If a character walks into a beautiful forest, description would be talking about that forest and trying to make it clear to the reader what that forest looks like, smells like, tastes like, sounds like and feels like. This is an example of a character description from my book They Stay. Francesca Russo has an oval face with acne covered skin and lips so chapped they flake. A dress clings to her round shoulders which looks like it was made from an old painter's shirt. I find that really long paragraphs of description pull me out of the story, so the rule of thumb that I operate by while I write now is to use as little description as possible and when I do use description, to weave it into the action of the scene. I used to write a lot of passages like the one that I just read to you, where I describe everything about a character all at once, from their hair color to their eye color to what they're wearing, and then I don't really talk about their physicality throughout the rest of the scene. But now what I do is I pick one defining characteristic of the character and just the, the thing that pops into my mind or is the most unique about them and I describe that first and then later on I will sprinkle in a couple of descriptions as I'm writing in the prose. So instead of having that one chunky sentence or the passage at the beginning about that character, the description is distributed throughout the scene. I don't want to fall prey to white room syndrome where I don't have any details that bring my settings to life, but I also don't want to have the really, really long passages that just drone on and on and on and make them so specific that my readers don't have any room to imagine what they look like for themselves. So here is an example of what I mean. This is the first page of my upcoming book, They Return, which is coming out in January. In this scene, my main character is in the hospital. She has just sustained a head injury. She's feeling really horrible and sick. I have a couple of new characters in this scene. I have a nurse. I have the setting, which is an emergency room. But I didn't want to just start by giving a passage describing the emergency room because my character has this horrible splitting headache and is just kind of not really all there. I didn't think that it was realistic for her to just sit there and describe where she is and then describe exactly who she's talking to and then never describe anything ever again. So I have it so that the description is woven in slowly. So for example, when I first introduced the nurse, I say a manicured hand reaches for the bucket. Her hand is manicured. This is a very specific little detail about the nurse that might give you a little visual clue as to what she may look like. She, I say, you know, the nurse takes the bucket away, but I don't say anything else about what the nurse looks like. You go down a little bit, she's got a really horrible headache. 
she feels really crappy, her mom says something, still nothing else about the nurse, and then only down here, when the nurse comes back, the nurse holds the kidney-shaped bucket against her hip like she does this all the time. She has bright red hair, a magenta stethoscope hanging around her neck, and seen it all before eyes. Judging by the casual way she's holding the bucket, she probably has seen it all before. This little passage is brief, it's only three sentences long, but it's still connected to the action because it's connected to the puke bucket and because she just vomited at the beginning of the chapter, the nurse has to do something with that vomit. The details that I choose to include are relevant to her. I don't over-describe her, I just give a couple of details that help illustrate, along with a manicured hand, what she may look like, and leave the rest up to the readers to imagine. In the next sentence I say she draws her over-tweezed eyebrows together. Another specific detail that might give a little bit of color as to what the nurse may look like. But it's also an action, so it's not saying the nurse has over-tweezed eyebrows, it's she's drawing her over tweezed eyebrows together because she's concerned about something that's happening. So you get to weave in that little detail about the character's appearance with an action that actually moves the story forward. This is what I really like to do in description. In the hospital, instead of describing everything in the hospital up front, I have the mom go and get some hand sanitizer as she's having a conversation with her daughter. I have the nurse like yank the curtain back closed after she exits because then it shows that there's a curtain that's wrapping around the bed. I have my main character trying to get warm underneath the little scratchy paper towel sheet and not it not being warm enough. So instead of coming up with all of these things straight up, I distribute them throughout the scene. While it's hard to provide a definitive answer for how much description is too much description, I would say that if you have any long passages of description in your story, they may be better off being cut down and distributed throughout the action of the story. If you can take any of your description and make it active, do that. If your character has tight braids, maybe they play with their braids when they're nervous and so they're playing with their hair and that's how your readers find out that they have these braids. Maybe your character has a mustache and is twirling their mustache when they're having a conversation with their character. Then you don't have to say, Mr. Weirdo has a mustache. You can say, Mr. Weirdo leans back in his chair and twirls his mustache. Another rule of thumb that really helped me when thinking about description was to think about it in terms of specificity and uniqueness instead of quantity. Don't just go through the list of hair color and eye color because let's be honest, hearing someone's hair color and eye color doesn't tell you a whole lot about what they actually look like. Try to picture their face in your head and think of the most defining detail of your character or the most defining detail of your setting or the object you're trying to describe. Include those specific and unique details about your character in your prose and you don't even have to tell readers what your character's eye color is. If they have a head of really frizzy wild hair, that might tell you more about their character than if they have blue eyes. One of my favorite examples of this is Harry Potter. The main three characters in Harry Potter, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, all have one very specific detail about their appearance that is brought up again and again while describing them, which makes the reader's picture of the character in their mind very vivid. Ron has bright red hair and freckles, and Hermione has buck teeth and these really, really crazy bushy curls. All of these things reflect something about their personality. Harry's lightning bolt scar reflects his traumatic past with he who must not be named. Ron's red hair and hand-me-down clothes reflect the fact that he is one of the younger Weasleys and that he grew up in a really big family and that he is related to all these other kids in school. And Hermione's big frizzy hair shows that maybe she's not as concerned about her the state of her hair as she is about schoolwork. At least in the genre that I write when writing young adult fiction, with description I'd say less is more, but make sure that your details are specific and evocative and ring true to what your main character would notice in a particular scene. If you find yourself writing paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of description, then I'd say that you probably don't need to. Your readers are smart. Trust your readers to be smart and imaginative and to fill in the blanks, but give them enough unique details to hang their imaginations on along the way. Also make sure you're using all five senses. That's a pretty big one. When you're describing, don't just describe what things look like, describe what things feel like and smell like. 
Make sure that you're actually making the scenes 3D. I have a bad habit of leaning towards visual descriptions and I always have to remind myself that there are more than just one sense and I need to focus on the other senses when experiencing scenes. Like temperature of a place plays a big role in how your character moves in a scene. That is not something I think about nearly enough. I'm, right now my new thing is that I'm trying to remind myself whether the character is really cold or not during the scene. Also when you're describing places and characters, make sure to include the information as soon as you can in the story. Not as soon as you introduce the character, not the first second that the character walks on this page, you have like 10 paragraphs describing them. Drop a couple of details, just the really, really major details as soon as they're introduced and then sprinkle the rest of their description in after. You don't want to all of a sudden have a huge uno reverse on your what your re reader is expecting a character to look like. You drop a really big detail later that totally shatters their perception of the character because that is jarring. So just give them a couple of very specific de details up front, but not too many, and then later on sprinkle in some description. So that was pretty rambly, but those are that, that's kind of my general thought when it comes to description and how I think about it. I really do believe less is more, and I think that more description slows down your pacing. A lot of description can also be bad when you are describing the way a character feels. Like, I think a lot of the times you want to make it clear how your character is feeling about something through dialogue or the way that they physically react to things. A lot of times you don't need to describe emotion if the emotion is conveyed in the way that the character is speaking or moving, or even what they're thinking if you're writing in first person. But all of this really is to be kept in mind when you're not working on your first draft. In my first draft, my first draft is for me. I'm the only one that sees my first draft and my purpose for my first draft is to get it so that I can see all of the places and characters in my story. If all these long paragraphs of description help me be able to actually see and understand my world more, then yes, I want all of those paragraphs of description. But when I'm revising, my readers might not want them, so I want to take all of the stuff that I've learned about my world, boil it down to the really important stuff, and only give them the important stuff. When you are writing your first draft, if you're trying to write as fast as possible, just write what you want to and don't overthink things like description too much. But when you're revising, it's very important to consider things like this and to trim it down in order to keep your pacing tight. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. I make a lot of videos like this sharing my perspective on what I do when I am personally confronting things like description or other craft related stuff. I share writing resources that I've found very helpful. I have I share courses that I've taken that I've found really helpful. I have spent a lot of time thinking about writing and what works for me in my process, so I want to share it with you and see if it also potentially helps you. Do you have any rules of thumb when writing about description? How much description do you like to include? Do you agree with me about description? Do you think that you need more description in order to write a three-dimensional story? Let me know your opinion down in the comments and I would love to discuss it with you. I hope you have a fantastic week, everybody. And as always, happy writing.